Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Grandpa. I'm Daniel. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. And girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. Welcome back, everybody. It's so nice to see you. Last time we were filming, uh, we just got back from the wholesaler, and Daniel and I had stopped at Tractor Supply and picked some stuff up. Now, the thing we had picked up from Tractor Supply was actually some grain for the calves. Now, a lot of you know we're in the process of getting everybody moved over to the grain that we grind. But in the beginning, we always start them on some molasses sweet feed. It helps them to get acclimated to eating grain. And we also just got two new little calves. Got this guy here, and then this little Hereford white face. Beautiful looking calves. This is a Hereford Holstein cross, I believe. And then we have a Angus Holstein cross. Both beautiful animals. And all of these calves along here, they are all Angus Holstein cross. A lot of dairy farmers breed Angus into their Holstein herds. And when dairy farmers do that, it actually raises the price on their calves. I mean, it costs us a little bit more money when we buy the calves off of the dairy farmers, but I'm all for dairy farmers making a little extra money. They deserve it. Hey, Daniel, how have things been going today? Pretty good, just working on bagging potatoes. Are we about out of all potatoes for the year? No, we have another bin to wash. They're looking a little scruffy here. Daniel needs a shave. Now the potatoes I'm putting in here is a variety called Eva. And we really like these varieties of potatoes. You can see they're really round. Not all potatoes are like that. Some people think of the russets, which are the long French frying potatoes, but these Evas are round and we really like them. They're a good all round potato. You can use them for chips. Sometimes you can use them for fries. Really good for baked potatoes too. Now the bags we are filling, they are 10 pound bags, so we need 10 pounds of potatoes in them. Daniel is weighing, and then he's gonna close up the bags. Now some people who've watched the channel for a really long time know that we have an actual sewer that can close up these bags. However, for some reason, the needle on the sewer keeps breaking. We don't know if it's an internal problem or what the issue is, but we're not using it right now. And the problem is, uh, the person that we took to fix it said it would cost more to fix it than to get a new one, which seems to be a problem with everything. So we still have it. We're gonna see if we can fix it. Maybe there's an alternative method to get the sewer working again. But for now, the old tried and true wire around the top method is what we're gonna have to work with. When we used the bag sewer, it made the potato bags look really nice. It was kind of professional. But if the bag sewer is not working, then we just have to use what we have on hand. This way makes it look more farmer. Daniel said he thinks the wires look more rustic anyway. You know, you uh, pay for the experience, not just the product anymore. pretty simple. We're just checking every potato that comes up over the conveyor, making sure that none of them are rotting or have bad spots on them, because if they do have bad spots, then we don't want to run them through the washer, because there's no point in washing something like that. So any bad spots, they get taken out and fed to the cows. This isn't the most fun or exciting job, but it is important. Daniel was up pushing the last of the potatoes out. 
So after these potatoes run through the washer, all of our white potatoes will be washed for the year. And there you have it, the last of our white potatoes for the year. So um, Daniel is gonna move these potatoes out of the way because we have a little bit of red we're gonna wash. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna take the four wheeler up and put the bagged potatoes in the farm market. Daniel just dumped in the last of the red potatoes. Now the red potatoes, they aren't looking as nice as the white potatoes. So there might be a little bit more loss when it comes to those, but hopefully what we did put in will be nice. Now, as you store your potatoes for longer, uh, some of them are bound to go bad, get soft, start to rot, whatever the case is. And normally we feed those to the cows, which is what we're gonna do with all these potatoes that we have here. And on the surface, an entire wheelbarrow full of rotten potatoes may look bad, but we have to remember all of those potatoes came out of like 10 bins of potatoes. And uh, no one likes to see potatoes go to waste. So we're gonna feed these to the cows. Would we have liked to sell them? Yes, but unfortunately we can't. Now fortunately enough for us, none of this stuff is in a condition that would affect the cows in a negative way. And just so they don't get it spread out all over their feeders and all over their pens, we're actually gonna dump this down in the pasture. So Daniel is just gonna take the skid steer loader down to the pasture, dump it out, and then if the cows want it, they can pick through it. On my way up after we bagged potatoes, I uh, left the quad right there and there was potatoes on it. My mom, Miranda, must have brought them in because the doors were locked and I couldn't get in with the potatoes. Daniel's on a mission. Aunt Rhonda needed a pepper for lunch, so he's climbing all the way in the back to grab it. My boot washing station is uh, a little difficult to use right now. Can't even clean my boots off correctly. We just got the four-wheeler put away and everything else put away. So now we're gonna be grading some eggs. Look at this egg. How am I? That ain't gonna fit in there. I can't close that carton. Do you see that? Wow. Good job, Andrew. If anyone was curious on how many eggs that we got, we got this box almost completely full. And then over here we have a completely full box ready to go up into the farm market. Now the farm market isn't open today, but it will be open tomorrow. And a lot of the customers will be showing up for eggs. So it's a good thing we have all these eggs. And all of that we just graded was four days worth of eggs. Just got finished up with eggs and now we are going to feed animals for the night. Daniel and I just gotta feed these guys out here, make sure everybody's got water and take care of the calves. Fortunately, uh, 
Ground has stayed kind of frozen all day. The top part in a couple sections has gotten a little smeary, but it looks good. You can see everybody is all ready for dinner time. That's how we know when it's time to feed. The cows basically tell us. I, I said no, I said don't lick the camera. Now after we're done feeding at night, we always try and pull the cart out of the way so that the person in the skid steer loader doesn't need to get out in the morning. How did everything go with the calves? Fine. If you were fast enough, you could have came over and helped. You only have like 12 calves over there to feed. I have all these cows out here. My calves are cuter. These are the only animals we don't have the heat tape hooked up for because we've moved them and haven't done it yet. But we will do it, we will do it. <sighs> that should about do it for work today. Daniel and I are gonna head up to the house now. So what I'm gonna do now is go up to the house and I am gonna edit YouTube videos, fun stuff. Oh, that smells like potatoes. That's a lot of potato smell. I see meat and potatoes so far, so that's a good sign. Meatloaf. Ooh, yeah, you're right. We are having meatloaf for dinner. Alrighty, everybody. I'm a little late to this, but we are now sitting down to eat dinner. Daniel was correct. We're having meatloaf, and we're also having some roasted potatoes. Everything is looking good. Don't you agree? Alrighty, since everyone is already sitting down to eat, that means this is where we're gonna end the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and we hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.